video is a pretty personal to me. In effect, it's a story about me, IKEA and Notion. I know it sounds quite bizarre that IKEA could be connected to Notion. But as you go through the video, it will become very clear to you. So over the years, I've come to appreciate IKEA furniture and how it helps me in my daily life. There is a learning curve each time and I need to keep looking at the instructions and try and assemble it myself. I go through multiple trials and mistakes to get things right. All of this involves so much, so much of effort. But at the end of it all, there was an admiration that I had created a masterpiece. But what I realized afterwards is that I continued to have a special fondness for this piece of furniture that I had created. So fond in fact that I continued to carry it around with me even when I moved cities and countries. When I work with Notion, I get that same feeling because it's a labor of love. Maybe instead of Notion, it could be another no-code app that has similar feelings for you. The question I ask myself, why do I feel like that? In 2011, Michael Norton of Harvard Business School, Danielle McCorn of Yale and Dan Ariely of Duke published three studies. They described the IKEA effect. So they went on to demonstrate that the more effort you put into something, the more someone will value it. The labor in assembly of a flat packed furniture, creating a Lego toy from mere blocks, baking a cake from a premix and custom ingredients, or creating an origami are all similar examples that create the IKEA effect. In my case, I had a fantastic Indian carpenter who helped me bring my furniture designs to life. So in the process, I spent countless hours of sketching, finalizing my vision, and now the physical product is in front of me. So this mind, this mind is a fickle thing. We just started to feel that we had an evening together, a relationship, a bond, and you can't really put this very easily into words. And that's possibly because I invested a part of myself into that thing. I also noticed that this happens only when the labor results in a successful completion of a task. In all of this, I fully recognize that this necessarily isn't the best product. If you take the open source community, it's made up of very smart software developers who've given us some wonderful pieces of code so that we can progress our cause. The only thing that's tagged to that piece of software is their name and their popularity. So even though there is no monetary reimbursement, they feel that something is theirs and they're attached to it. I got attracted to Notion as a software because it solved a specific problem for me. I wanted to manage my YouTube projects and during my search, I stumbled upon one of Thomas Frank's videos. So I started tinkering around his template to make it my own and I quickly discovered that this app was capable of solving many, many more problems for me. The core features were innovative enough for me to stick to it. So over the months, Notion went on to add the web clipper function the timeline function and more recently the API and sync blocks. In all of this, my involvement with the product became stronger and I became an advocate of the product. As a management consultant, this has been one of the most frequently asked questions from my clients. Should I put all my eggs into one basket? Or should I build an ecosystem around the product in question? So while one product was the way to go, if we had this conversation about two decades back, increasingly the best of breed approach has become the go-to for me. Take Notion itself. It's succinctly changed direction from an all-in-one workspace approach to a collaborative approach with the public beta release of the API. So personally, I think the APIs are the only way forward for the marketplace. Think about it. APIs in payments and banking. APIs in software. APIs in manufacturing and supply chain distribution. And there are many industries that are spawning out of this API approach. 
with players like Zapier, Automate.io and Integromat who are very quick to take in the advantages for a small integration space. In the longer run, I feel that APIs will become more standardized and become plug and play and the need for these players will wane out with a steady set of products and services. You stick to a piece of software much longer than you would otherwise when that one thing you need is better than anything else. So this could be Gmail Tag, the Evernote's Web Clipper or Text Sniper's Text Capture from Images. Roam for example lets you connect notes in unique ways. Something a plain text file alone could never do. You see the IKEA effect is human behavior. So as long as Notion can appeal to that human behavior, it will thrive. With the rollout of the API, Notion has filled up gap. But at the end of the day, while it still might be flat packed, the content of that will significantly change over time. Not all productivity driven insights make it into a video, even though they're really exciting. I do, however, want to share these insights with you, which I think is very useful for your personal journey. So that's why I've created a Twitter channel exactly to do that. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you like this video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe. Stay here. Peace.